Come here. You have said you can do anything, but not everything. I used to just go, 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 and now I want my life back too. I cannot see the path forward clearly right now. Let's just start with a cold, hard reality check. We are not going to get to do all of the stuff that we want to do in the short amount of time that we have in life. That sounds so obvious, but frankly, I think a lot of people, they're not really present and in radical acceptance of that. Radical acceptance is you're really understanding the full implication of that. What does that mean? Take that list of the 20 things that you know in your heart of hearts that you're going to do in this life. Take the bot 15 of them and just cross them off the list. They're not going to happen, or at least they're not going to happen in anywhere close to the way that you're thinking that they would happen. We are going to end up doing far less in our life than our ambition or desire was going to allow us. I just want to ground this conversation in that because the number one thing I think that stops people from accomplishing big things is the desire to do even bigger things even more things. And in a weird way, the people I know who are radically in acceptance that they can't do as much as they think they can do in life are actually getting a lot done. I know, counterintuitive truth here. But the counterintuitive truth is that when you get radical acceptance of how little time and energy you have and get yourself radically focused on doing things, hopefully with leverage, then you actually realize that you can do more by accepting how limited you are. And when we treat ourselves as unlimited, we actually end up getting less done because we're putting all of this stuff on our plate. We're not chewing and swallowing it. We're not digesting it. So Joan, coming back to you, there needs to be this almost stoic acceptance that a life well lived means choices that were made, hard decisions made. So there may be some hard decisions in your future. One hard decision could be to say, I'm gonna do, continue to do all these things, but I'm gonna do them at a level below where I'd like to do them. I'm gonna continue to play my instrument, but I won't get as much time to practice as I truly want. I'm gonna continue to be this artistic director and it will continue to take more time than I'd like it to. I'm gonna continue to focus on my personal life, but I'm gonna get less time with my husband that I really like. That is a choice. It is radically accepting status quo and saying, I continue with status quo, except the difference is I'm going to get into radical acceptance of it and choose it and say, I could quit playing my instrument. That's a choice available to you. It might seem inconceivable, but it's a choice. You could make that choice. You could quit being an artistic director. Also a choice. It might seem inconceivable to you, but it is a choice. And you could divorce your husband. I'm not saying do that. What I'm saying is, it's a choice that you have. I could give my kids up for adoption. That's crazy. I would never think about that in a million years, but it's a choice. Like I could do it. Just because it's inconceivable to me doesn't mean I lack the choice, which means I am choosing my children. I am choosing them. I choose my job. I choose my instrument. I choose my children. Like I'm choosing this choice fully and I'm accepting that I don't get to have the perfect scenario. I was mentioning last night in my coaching call about ranked choice voting. It's all the rage now. Ranked choice voting is where instead of just voting for one candidate, you get to vote for all of the candidates in the election in the order that you would prefer to see them win. And what can happen in ranked choice voting is you get what they call automated runoffs or instant runoffs, where if, if everyone's first choice doesn't add up to more than 51%, then they drop the bottom candidate and reallocate those votes to the top three candidates and run it again. And if the number one choice didn't get over 50%, they drop the third choice candidate, reallocate their votes and run it again. What tends to happen in ranked choice voting elections is that what you see is that the majority of people don't get their first choice vote, but a vast majority of people get their second or third choice vote. And often what you experience in ranked choice voting is that a broader population feels content with the person who's governing them because on some level, even if it wasn't their first choice, it was their second or third choice vote. And also, you know, incidentally, instead of getting candidates who are further and further out on the fringe because they can win primaries, it tends to give you candidates that are further and further into the center. Candidates that even if there's some, not somebody's first choice might be their second choice. Why am I going on this tangent about ranked choice voting? Because that, my friends, is a great metaphor for your life. A lot of times, Joan, you won't get any of your first choice votes, but you can get all of your second or third choice votes. Right now, I'm working out. I'm doing a workout at the gym that is not my favorite type of working out. And I'm working out at a time of day that I hate because the gym is cramped. So why am I working out in that way at that time? Because it works for the other things in my life. It works for when I drop off my kid. It works for making sure that my foot doesn't get injured. It works for making sure that I get back home and I still have enough energy to do deep work, leverage work, tier one energy work for the rest of the day. 
So in life, we are not optimizing against one factor or said a different way. And a lot of times in adulthood, we don't get to have any of our first choice votes, but we can have all of our second choice votes. And so in that sense, are we getting exactly what we want? No, but we're getting a lot of our preferences met across a lot of the different areas of our life.